Welcome back to Digi Bros. What's up? Welcome back. Pedro, do you want to do another topic or should I do another topic? Uh, I've got a few that'll last like a whole episode, probably. Sure, get started while I'm doing this puzzle. Alright, alright. We'll just do the <laughs> first <laughs> first one on my list. I don't know how long this one will last. Uh, maybe short, maybe long. Depends on how much input we both have. I want to talk about what I think is one of our, and I do mean me and you, but I also mean everyone, greatest weaknesses. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Getting dark. You ready for it? No. <laughs> Moods. Moods. Yeah, I'd say Moods. that's like society's greatest weakness. Moods. Especially people like us. Yes. Me and you. Where really everything bad. we do is relying on our mood. Moods. <laughs> I once... This, this really had never fully come to my attention until a conversation I had with Ghost Lightning, my mentor, as yes. I always call him. Um, it's funny when I call him that. Like, someone pointed out to me that it's weird that I always call him my mentor when he's... Because he is my friend, you yes. know? But, like... He's your mentor. I mean, I yeah, understand that. Yeah, he, he taught me so much. I, I, I feel the need to refer to him as my mentor, you know? Yes, he's your fucking sensei, man. He really is my sensei. <laughs> um... So my mentor, Ghost Lightning, was talking to me one time, and, you know, I I used to always bitch about how, like, I wanted to do this or that, but I wasn't going to, blah, blah, blah. Like, he, he told me to do something or other, and I was like, oh, I'm not in the mood, or I, I haven't been in the mood for it lately. And yeah. he said, you always let yourself be controlled by these moods. You need to take control. No. And I never thought about that before. Like, the idea that I was, that, like, <laughs> that, that, that. Doing stuff depending on my mood was something that I should be controlling. Like, don't yes. let it be, I'm not in the mood. You have to say, fuck the mood, you yeah. know? And, like, yeah, I just think it's a huge problem. Because, like, everyone acts that way. Everyone's, like, especially artists. Yes. Artists are always, like, of course, I'm not oh, in the mood not, to uh, do I don't, all these things I my, need to do to I get I'm not inspired. I don't have inspiration. It's, like, you gotta get that shit, you know? And there's a lot of artists who think that... Well, inspiration is something that comes to you. It's not. You gotta get that shit. Because it's not hard. All you gotta do is look for it. Yes. You know, you gotta go out and just look at shit. Look at everything. That's my number one method for getting inspiration. I mean, if we apply this to my work, you can see it immediately. How do I get ideas for videos? I watch all the anime. You know? Yeah. Like, I just watch everything. And then... I get an idea by something I watch, you know? But, like, I don't know beforehand what's going to give me an idea. The only yes. way to do it is to just look at as much shit as possible. Of I course. keep looking, I keep looking, I keep looking, and then I see a thing and I go, ah, that's an idea. <laughs> if you're an artist, like, like a, let's say you're, you're someone who draws, a drawing artist, look at all the drawings. Then go outside, look at all the people, look at all the situations, watch all the movies, get all the ideas, just consume ideas yeah. you know really consuming <laughs> consuming more media and more ideas and, and all kinds of things is what gives you inspiration because that's right you're you're stimulating your fucking mind there's so many people i talk to who are like who who will say things like i only end up drawing when i don't mean to you know yeah and it's like well then put yourself in situations like that you know, like, yeah. instead of going, like, instead of having sometimes where you go, oh, I really want to do a drawing like this, but I'm not inspired, so, you know, and then, like, every once in a while, you're listening to a podcast and you suddenly get inspired and you make something, well, then instead of ever sitting around wanting to draw that one thing, just listen to podcasts all the time, yes. you know, and you'll constantly be making shit because <laughs> you keep getting inspired by the podcast, you know, like, put yourself into that frame of mind and, like... For me, when it comes to moods, my mood is very easily tied to whatever I'm listening to. Yes. You know? And so <laughs> I, I've i figured out over time that you can change your mood by changing the music. Yes. If I start listening to depressing music, it will put me in a depressing mood and I won't want to do anything. Yes. You know, if I decide, oh, today I'm listening to nothing but fucking Jeff Rosenstock and goddamn Mark Lanigan and f fucking... Uh, N neutral milk hotel I'm gonna have a, a shitty day yes. because I'm gonna sit around and think about all the bad things in my life and how none of it nothing <laughs> matters and like I'm gonna die uh -huh. and I'm too old you know but if I just throw on some Anamanaguchi all of it goes away uh -huh. you know it's just immediately like okay yeah now I'm in the mindset of cool shit or what I usually do cause like 
you know, sometimes if you're in a bad mood, you don't want to be put into a positive mood. You yes. don't you don't want to hear happy music because you're just gonna go. Ah, eh, I'm not. Uh, I, yeah, this is too the much. The fuck out of here. But what I will do <laughs> is put on a podcast or put yes. on Game Grumps, something, you know, something that distracts that's you. completely emotionally neutral. You know, and then that lets you just kind of like ride out yes. the feeling. You know, and then put yourself back in the mindset. I got okay. I got to do stuff. You know, like you can't let your mood control you. And the second you say. I'm not in the mood for that, but it's something you know you should be doing. Reassess your situation and think, how can I be in the mood for that? Uh -huh. What do I gotta do to be in the mood for that? You know, I feel like you're pretty bad about. I was waiting for the part where you start cutting into me about this. Right, <laughs> I, I was waiting for you to cut into yourself about it, but uh -huh. you never did. So well, because you've been on a good rant, I, I'm not just gonna <laughs> cut you off when you've been literally. You have not left a pause in a <laughs> sentence forever, so I'm, I'm letting you do your spiel. I'm sorry. I, I I always feel like I need to be, <laughs> like I need someone to cut me off for me to stop talking. I'm not gonna cut you off when you're on a roll. Cause man. I'll cut you off. If, if oh, I need of to course. Say something. Well, I've, I've never feel that incredible urge to speak my mind over someone else's. All right. Well, what? How do you feel about this topic? Uh, hit and miss. Hit and miss. Yeah. Cause I I definitely agree in some regards, but it's usually when I'm just kind of like, like if I'm just in a bad mood for no reason, and I'm just being like a little shit about it, then yes, I could agree with this. Yeah, like, like I can just be like, all right, I need to put myself in a different mindset and fix that. Uh -huh. But then there's sometimes where there's like a legitimate problem and you can't just solve that problem immediately. And so you're thinking about it and you that's, can't distract that, but, yourself. But that's the kind that I think you should distract yourself from the most. But then I can't do that. Cause I will think about what the problem is over anything else in the world. I will try right. goddamn hard and I will just ignore whatever the fuck I'm, you know, trying to distract myself with to think about this problem. And I will do all sorts of things to I've, try to, to I've try gotten, to just kill the time to get, to get rid of the problem. I think, I think being a YouTuber has trained me to get pretty good at not thinking about my problems uh -huh. because oftentimes the solution is to sit uh -huh. You know, like, my channel gets taken down. What can I do? Yeah. Wait two weeks for some appeal to go through and hope for the best. Uh -huh. And if that doesn't There's happen... different kinds of problems. You know, different kinds of feelings. I gotta sit. But then, yeah, when I'm just sitting around being bored and being a shit about it, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to fucking do anything. Then eventually, like, today, I started walking Bakudo really fast because I was like, I don't want to get in a, a do-nothing mood today and fucking blow everything. Right. Well... That ended up being less of a discussion and more of me giving, like, an inspirational speech. Yeah, I mean, speech. you kind of went on and on, and <laughs> I, somewhere in there I might have had something to say. But I feel like it's something we've talked about before. Well, I, and, I, like, I just mean, like, I feel like I literally just gave a motivational speech you, to you the did. audience. <laughs> Someone uh, in the comments is going to go, oh, my God, I need to change my life. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I highly doubt Oh, that. man. Oh, Conrad, you're so smart. All right, should I do another one, or do you want to do one? Uh, you can keep going. All right. You're on a roll. <laughs> All right, I I don't entirely remember what I was going to say about this next. Of one. course. So this one is. You know, uh, I think I actually had something like this on on my topics because I had oh, one that said creative have? energy question mark. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that topic means. Creative I think it was something energy. about that. Is it like the creative mind versus the uh, the whatever mind? Wait, wasn't I? Wasn't that something I was telling you about? No. Shit. That's something I know about from uh, the guy from Monty Python did a, a TED talk or not a TED talk. No, I'm trying to remember. There, there was something like that it. where I had where I had divided up uh, different the, kinds of like consciousness or something. Yeah, I don't the, fucking the, know. The dude had a he had this whole spiel about how like creative people have like the the play mindset and yes. the work mindset. No, you, you did tell me about that before. Yeah, but I don't think that's. Look what into it, it John Cleese. By. Look up John Cleese on creativity. It's a great speech. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're not going to butcher it with our half remembered thoughts. Creative this energy. is the part, what by the I way, mean? where uh, this that was the scene in particular that pissed off Matthew Matosis about this game. Uh -huh. Because the whole game, they built up that guy as like yeah. this menacing villain, and then he just suddenly turns into this screeching child. Oh, no, not yet, because this is where they're showing the backstory of when Ganondorf came to him and gave him the power, because he was a screeching child. And so Ganondorf comes to him and gives him but this amazing power. But in that scene, power. he just suddenly started stomping and screaming like a petulant That's This child. is the past. Oh, okay. Now, he, when you fight him, he does kind of do that. Maybe that's what he was complaining about. But it's... 
I don't see the like. The no, point. this scene. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. He started stomping and screaming like he's in like a fucking like a cartoon character. I never mind. I thought it was good for his character because he's a, he's a misdirect as a bad guy where it's like he was this menacing thing, but it, it turns out he's just some fucking pawn that Ganondorf is using. I guess you'd have to watch Matthew Matosis' video Super in order to King's really. Aunt. I will accept no criticism of this game. <laughs> All your analysts can go fuck themselves. Hey man, Matt Dimitrosis yeah. is cool. Oh shit. Alright, I don't know what I meant by this, but uh... Audience versus author, perspective on work. So basically... I think we were talking about this. The idea of this is how it's interesting how like um... One of my audience members could watch oh, something damn. I made and think it's amazing. Yeah. And it could change their life and be super meaningful. No. Uh, and to me, it could have been bullshit. All I can see is the bad. <laughs> yes. Like I see it as, oh man, I fucked up here and there and like this is indicative of how I used to write or like uh, I feel bad about the way I wrote this or something. And I think that is fucking fascinating, especially when it comes to uh, okay, for instance, I because I don't really pull anything I do offline, right? I leave it all up. Um, everything I've ever made, I never take down stuff just because I don't like it. Uh, unless I, like, really feel like I fucked up. Yeah. You know, like my Zenko no Terror review that I, I hid because, like, I just felt like it was so badly written and I didn't want to have to have people keep finding it and, you know, forming an opinion on me based on it because I yeah. thought it was complete shit. Um... And I would rewrite it if I ever did another Zankyo Terror yeah. review. But, like, um, Jeff Burgess hides the majority of the music he makes. Yes. Because he wants to create... He sort of, you know, has his self-image is tied to his work. Like, how he sees himself is tied to what he has available. And he doesn't feel comfortable with the idea of presenting the work that doesn't represent him. Uh, Which is a lot of other people's favorite work by him, you know? So it, it raises some interesting questions about, like, do, uh, do I have all the rights to how the, I am perceived and, like, how I... What art of mine is out there? Or, like, should other people have a, a say in that, you know? like Yeah. Because some people probably care about my work more than I do. Of course. You know, there's probably people <laughs> They have who, found more value in it, you know, however they interpreted yeah. it. Whatever genius they attributed to your work that that may not have been there or, or that or you just, don't appreciate. Or just it's a bigger part of it. Like, fucking doing this? What am I fucking doing right now? Like, the Devu told me one time that he had he had downloaded all the old Digicasts that me and Brandon Tolentino did, and he had listened to them, like, a bunch of times, and he wanted more. Yeah. Because, like, they're there just... There we go. It was something that appealed to him super strongly, but and that there wasn't really any other thing quite like it on the yeah. internet, you know? And I was like, to me, those were always just something no one watched, and yeah. was therefore not that successful. That no one cared about. You know, like... You know, like me with the Measurement Man, like the, the few people who like that, and I'm right. just like, I'm glad you like it, but I don't know if I'll ever do it again, you know? Well, like, with Digicast, like, I... The, it was really, it was me and Tolentino and I did all the talking, you know, yeah. and like, it sort of isn't really representative of my current opinions or anything, like, on those subjects, because it was, you know, three years ago, so like, one of them is, both of us list our top 100 songs, well, none of those are my top 100 songs anymore, you yeah. know, like, or I'm sure a lot of them are, but like, you know, it, it's weird to, to go back to something like that and to have someone who's, like, still listening to them. And that's why uh, Jesse Wood hides all old co podcasts he does. Yeah. Because he was like, I don't want to be quoted on something I said unscripted that's, yeah, a year ago. Yeah, that's pretty true. You know? Because <laughs> people would do that. They'd say, oh, you said this in Horsecast, like, in 2012. And it's like, that was unscripted in 2012. I probably wasn't even thinking. I was probably drunk, you know? <laughs> um and, and so, yeah, it leads to, to funny, weird... But at the same time, like, I love the horse cast, you know? Like, maybe I... Because yeah. Jesse hides a lot of videos that are some of my favorite videos of his. And what I'm always fuck? like... What the fuck? can I... Oh, I'm not wearing the tunic. I'm always like... Oh, I'm not wearing the tunic. I'm always like, Jesse, why did you get rid of this video? This is one of my favorites. How could you hide this, you know? Uh, um, or it'll have some amazing quote <sighs> I want to go back to. Like, for instance... He did a, a review of the movie The Wolverine. Do you remember that movie? Uh, the, the most recent Wolverine movie? Yeah, I never watched it because I 
he yeah. he did a review of it, and it was just like a really standard review, which is why he hit it. Yeah. But there's a part in it where he's describing how every Wolverine story happens, <laughs> and at one part he says, like like part three of the story is. Wolverine kicks everybody's ass and calls everybody Bub. Uh -huh. And I just thought that was the funniest shit. So I went to go find the video to hear it again, and it was gone. And I was like, Jesse, how could you do this? You got rid of had that amazing line. And he's like, oh, I guess I have to use that line in another video. <laughs> nice. But, like, yeah, to him it was just some bullshit he made. But to me it was, like, this line I've remembered for years, you know. Yeah. Which, luckily, I'm friends with him, so I can tell him that, and he can, you know, use it again or whatever. But... Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see. Have you ever felt any of this about anything? I mean, not than... as much because I don't have a fan base. Right. Well, I mean, have so you ever felt that there's something you care about that you don't think the creator cares about? Uh, I don't know. Something you, like... I don't know what it would come I, to I mind feel like immediately. I'm sure there's been, like like I just said with Jesse Wood, like a lot of things that like resonated with me that I'm sure Maybe just a, did uh, not matter. It's like, me. I don't know if... It's true, but I feel that way about, like, a lot of artists' old albums, you know? Yeah. Like, this is one thing I was always thinking about, like, the first Coheed and Cambria album. It's like, we love it, but do they think of it as, like, oh, this is what we used to sound like I, and it wasn't you know, as good? I think I think they do because they still play those songs, you know? Yeah. There are bands that don't... But they, they might play, like, a new version. Of, they might, like, speed it up or something. Like, I, sometimes they'll, they'll play a song feel, twice as fast or whatever. I would ask the same question of, like, Foxy Shazam. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, we're like, they're, they don't play their early shit anymore. Yeah. You know, like, they didn't play anything from the Flamingo Trigger when we saw them live. Albeit it was a short performance, but, like, you know, that was when their third album had just come out. Yeah, which sounds nothing they, like their other stuff. And they almost only played their third album. Like, they yeah. played, like, one or two songs from the second album, you know, which was my favorite. Uh, and they played nothing from the first. So it's like, do they even, you know, like their early material? Um... Yeah, that is a good example. No. Uh, or, you know, a filmmaker who's sick of their early shit. There's, yeah. there's plenty of times where it, it really brings up the question of, like, what was this to you and what is it to me? People who care about my Digi's Crib videos. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> and again, for me, it's mostly like when I have something that's older that a lot of people watched, then I usually feel more, like, strongly attached to it. Like, you know, even if I don't think it's that good, it's like, well, this is the one that put me on the map. So, like, there's an emotional attachment. But when people are into something like my Digi's Crib videos, it's like, you're the only one who cares. Like, yes. if you care, <laughs> if you're one of the, like, the, the, the people who always asks me when I'm going to do another Digi's Crib, which there is a handful of people who are always asking about that, but yeah. guys, you're the only ones who care. Exactly. You know, those videos, I'm sure none of them has more than... 4,000 views tops, you know, and like, I certainly have never rewatched them. Like, yeah. I know there's people who rewatch them frequently because they just find them weirdly entertaining, but like, I can't convince Victor to help me film another one. It's um, gonna be so boring for me, you don't understand. I do understand. There's nothing but I wanted, I'd rather do less in my there's, life. There's a bunch of people who want me to do one, and <laughs> I want to do one, and I can't do it alone. So if you want another Digi's Crib Victor uh, video, you gotta bug Vic, because I'm not gonna do it by uh. myself. Um, <laughs> Victor's the one to annoy about that. Uh, but yeah. Shit, where'd he go? Motherfucker. I feel like probably at the time I wrote that down, I might have had a more specific example. But of course. We've, we've sort of... I, I made the point. You get what I'm talking yes. about. Um, I shouldn't end this episode in the middle of this boss fight, should I? Uh, probably not. How, how much longer do you think I think it's almost fight? over. Alrighty, let's uh, fuck this guy up. This tiny little ass. Shit. Is that like his original size? No, it's, it's just tiny? it's just goofy. <laughs> it's just a goofy fight. That is pretty fun. I love that you revisit all the boss rooms in, in kind of a new way. Boom! Alright, kill him. talk about kill something him. while we kill um, this guy. Alright, let me look at my list to see if I have something short. I really don't. My next one will be another deep, deep cut. Oh, this one's a long title. I watched Dumb and Dumber 2. How was that? I was impressed by their their jokes per minute. <laughs> like there's there okay. there must not have been a single second of the movie where they weren't making a new joke. 
which is that's good. impressive after watching like shitty Adam Sandler movies and you're like, these right. guys don't even fucking try anymore. Like right. there's barely any jokes and none of them are good. And this movie was like, it was hit and miss, but they tried <laughs> like really hard to throw as many jokes as possible in. So that was an impressive aspect. Otherwise it was stupid. They're too old to do this shit and they need to stop. It was one of those like, all right, you were cute, you know, in in your twenties when you did the first one, you, now you're just creepy okay, old dude. But did you like, even like Dumb and Dumber One? I mean, it was, I haven't seen it since I, I was young. I thought so. that movie was dumb as shit. But I mean, it's so. supposed to be dumb as shit, right? But, like, but it was, you know, it was big. But then this was just like you guys. It's just weird now because you're old, right? Well, I mean, if they got the jokes, then I I can respect yeah. that, you know. But yeah, they certainly went hard on like trying to do jokes. Like they it, it clearly took them a minute to write. <laughs> yeah. Well, they had 20 fucking yeah. years. And I guess if you were a big fan of the first movie, I'm sure it would be a good sequel. There were some clever moments. It, it wasn't the worst, you know, comedy movie I've you seen. You expected it. worse? Yeah. 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 Like, at, le at least it wasn't, like, as fucking thrown in as, like, Adam Sandler movies and shit. Where it's just like, he he doesn't even try. Like, I, I, me and Hope watch Pixels. <laughs> Which is why did you do that? Because I I had you didn't to. see it in theaters, did you? No, no, okay. we we watched it on Plex, you know, downloaded. But right. that was you know quite fucking horrible, and that's a movie where it's just like they did not even try. Adam it's Sandler a, does not scam. deliver his jokes with any enthusiasm at all. You're aware whereas, that like, it is a scam. At least Jim Carrey is still acting. Like, yeah, I I know it's a scam. <laughs> just. You know, it was it was very stupid. There was more seen... more effort in that than in like Paul Blart Mall Cop Two, but at least Paul Blart Mall Cop Two was endearing in some ways. Like you feel like like Kevin James actually like cares a little bit about himself. Great. Adam Sandler is just a fucking asshole. Like you feel it. I uh. I highly recommend anyone who hasn't seen it before watch the Half in the Bag video on Jack and Jill. Yes. In which the 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 guys from Half in the Bag watch Jack and Jill and it gradually becomes apparent to them that the Adam Sandler movies aren't just bad but they yeah, are literally a scam. They are This one actually didn't have quite as much product placement as, you know, the typical like except that it's advertising Sandler. every video game. Yeah. Well, really it's just like Namco, I think is where right. all the games came from and then uh huge Namco. There were some car advertisements and things, but then they they'd have funny stuff like <laughs> Like, the guy's clearly drinking Jack Daniels with the labels turned out. I'm like, I've never, never seen that as a problem in a high-budget movie. Like, <laughs> ever seen them turn the label out on a bottle of alcohol because they can't show the label. That, I fucking laughed my ass off when I saw Maybe that. Maybe they lost the endorsement or something. Something like that. At some like point that. in development. Like, clearly they, they had that prop and they could not show that Jack Daniels label. Uh. Oh, shit, we beat Zant. All right, uh, next time on Digibros? Sweet, right yeah, now? sure. Okay. I don't have more to say about pixels. All right.